Listen to so much crap in the last two weeks. Hey, buddy. You know, you hear all that crap, but I understood that that crap was going to come with the territory. Hey, buddy. But I'll live with the crap. Buddy. And uh, I feel very good. He's a disgruntled Scottish guard known for his lethal temper and his unusual eating habits. He weighs a metric ton. His name, Fat Bastard. One of the things, Mike, that's been pointed out over the course of today and last night after the game is that you seem resigned to the fate after the game, that there wasn't much fire in you, and you sort of stood up before the media and said, well, you know, this is the way it is. We, uh, Are you resigned to this fate? Is well, you're, you're the same guy that wrote about me when I did have the fire, that that was the mm -hmm. wrong thing to do. So who are you crapping? Well, I'm just Don't asking. Don't crap me. No, 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 no. Tell me lies. Tell me sweet little It's like when you go swimming and you don't realize you've had water in your ear and then later your ear clears up and you go, oh, I guess I wasn't hearing everything quite as well. It is indeed time for Who You Crapping and Terry always likes to keep this simple by limiting this to something someone said, not something someone did. Fair enough. And also... Tighten it up and don't ramble and know where you're going. Otherwise, Tannehill is probably going to launch you into Lake Michigan, would yeah. be my guess. Unless he has some other creative things planned, and I wouldn't put that past him either. I like the catapult. We will start with Napoleon Dynamite on the score. Hey, guys, I just want you to know I've been with more women than both of you, and I think Mrs. Claus is flipping hot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dan, you said that people can transfer videos on the iPhone by bumping phones. Well, you must have had Margaret Emery touching herself on the brain, which is flipping gross, by the way, because the iPhone doesn't do that. Even my Uncle Rico knows that, and he's flipping retarded. So, Dan, you gay-bearded weirdo, Merry Christmas, New Year crapping. Okay, bye. Thank you, Napoleon. You kept it tight. BP in Peoria says this goes out to Matt Abaticola, who last Thursday, he said, my baby is due on Christmas, and I can't wait. Can't wait, Matt. Really, I just had my second baby two weeks ago. I'd like to know what you can't wait for. Is it the constant crying, the constant wailing, the lack of any meaningful sleep, the screwing up at your day job because you've had no sleep, the all-too-frequent calls to the nurse because the baby's making some weird sound you've never heard before, non-stop changing of crap-filled diapers, the non-stop smell of crap-filled diapers as you pile them into the diaper genie sitting in your living room rather than taking them out to the trash, or could it be the short-term lockdown and bedroom activities? Matt, instead of can't waiting for your baby to arrive, be on your knees praying to God that this next week lasts as long as possible. My advice, hang out with the wife, get drunk a few last times, because after that baby arrives, you're going to be asking yourself only one question. Who am I crapping? You know, you guys are scaring me on the whole married children thing. Every time I talk to a guy who's married or had kids, it just it it's, it frightens me. Look, I'll be honest with you, Lawrence. Marriage and kids are great. Babies are a bitch. Really? Some people love babies, love newborns. I never liked babies. You like your kids better I, now? Yeah. No, I don't. I just I don't get. There's nothing there. It's just it's just a screaming crapping machine. It, it's it, trust me. When you when you get to two, call me. Okay. Gary in Evanston is on who you're crapping on the score. Happy holidays, guys. You too, uh, Michael, Gary. Le Michael Learned of the Waltons is a beautiful 70-year-old woman. Anyway, just ah. on that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just before the botched late game handoff by Army QB Trent Steelman that cost the Cadessa Navy game and made Steelman cry, CBS College football analyst Gary Danielson said that, quote, no matter how this game turns out, Trent Steelman has proven that he is a leader and a winner. While Army finished this season with a record of two wins and ten losses, in his four-year career, Stillman's Army teams are 17 and 32, including an 0-4 record against Navy. So a leader, maybe, but a winner, no way. Gary Danielson, who are you crapping? One here from Agnostic Evangelist, and it goes out to moral arbiter, split personality disorder victim, and alleged sports journalist for the Washington Post, Sally Jenkins. 
In her recent screed titled Why I'm Not Angry at Lance Armstrong, she plays apologist for the disgraced cancer survivor, coming up with multiple reasons why it was okay for Armstrong to use performance-enhancing drugs and defiantly deny his use of them for over a decade. One, everyone else was doing it. Two, Lance came from humble origins and didn't have other career options. Three, he worked harder at cheating than everyone else. And four, I, Sally Jenkins, received a lot of money from writing two books with and about Lance. Five, the USADA doesn't follow due process. Six, Lance Armstrong single-handedly raised awareness that cancer is a horrible, deadly disease. In the apotheosis of the absurd, Jenkins writes, Lance never made me write a single paragraph in It's Not About the Bike or the sequel Every Second Counts, and the vast majority of them I stand by as honest, such as this one. Cycling is so hard, the suffering is so intense that it's absolutely cleansing. Well, is this the same Sally Jenkins who was morally outraged by Joe Paterno and the cover-up culture at Penn State? I don't need to take the time to do a point-by-point comparison, but her assessment of Paterno ends thusly. The only explanation I can find for this striking lack of empathy is self-absorption. In asking how a paragon of virtue could have behaved like such a thoroughly bad guy, the only available answer is that Paterno fell prey to the single most corrosive sin in sports, the belief that winning on the field makes you better and more important than other people. Okay, Sally, so Paterno's bad, but Armstrong is good. So how in the world could you write two books with Lance Armstrong and not reveal that he was a doping, cheating, intimidating phony? And now with your continued Armstrong apologia in the face of mountains of damning facts that you conveniently buried, who you crapping? Well done. Ah, that's, that's satisfying there. That's good. Maddox Boy on the north side is on the score. Happy holidays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This crap goes out to the editors at ESPN.com. Earlier this month, the Booyahs released a list of their 100 greatest players in Major League Baseball history. And I know we've all seen this before, but no, their list had a twist. All allegations, admissions, and suspicions of PED use were not to be considered by the voters. How novel. So never once during the capsule accomplishments of number 95, Sammy Sosa, number 85, Manny Ramirez, number 83, Mark McGuire, number 18, Alex Rodriguez, number 7, Roger Clemens, or number 3, Barry Bonds, would a reader see any mention of the initials like PED or HGH, or words like steroids, Splintstone vitamins, or andro. Okay, fine, I get you wanted this to only be about what was accomplished on the field. But wait, I turn to the 66th greatest player, and what do I read? Quote, Gaylord Curry was widely known for doctoring baseball throughout his career. And in the capsule comment, his reputation was described as, quote, checkered. Checkered? Like the grown man whose head grew five sizes after he turned 30? <laughs> like the man who publicly threw his wife under the bus? Like the guy who had $20,000 go missing from a hotel lobby? Like the guy who blamed his positive PED test on a female hormone? Like the sports conglomerate which tries so hard to manage the message? ESPN, who are you crapping? Nicely done. Or like the guy who killed a guy. <laughs> Zombie Chris Henry says this is for the former bear, known at least to Boomer Esiason as Manimal. <laughs> <laughs> On Monday in Mully and Hanley, Dan Hampton, while discussing Brian Urlacher's comments regarding Bears fans, stated that the Bears had a, quote, very, very smart fan base, unquote. Oh, boy. I can only imagine what must be on Hampton's uber-discriminating smart fan checklist. Cheering so loudly that it causes your team's offense to call timeouts at home? Check. Regardless of relevance to a conversation, shoehorning a comparison of the current team to a team that won a Super Bowl more than 25 years ago in a wildly different and now irrelevant era? Check. Continuing to blindly worship a drunken, carrot-looking man despite his repeated acts of (laughs) asshattery? Check. Inability to win more than $30 on CSN's gas money while also coining new nicknames for former Bears? Check. In Hampton's mind, every Mensa meeting is full of mustachioed men named Bob, (laughs) calmly debating a question that's plagued mankind for centuries, which is more important, the fire or the passion? Dan Hampton, who you crapping? And then there was Chicago's Dan Hampton, the (laughs) manimal. No, no, he's not. Bill Walton's buck teeth next on the score. Manimal was my favorite mid-80s primetime drama. It was nobody's favorite anything. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. 
So this crap goes out to John Feinstein, who, after wrapping up a CBS Sports Minute, which was enthralling, by the way, about the Mets trading R.A. Dickey, said, there's only one word to describe the Mets organization, pathetic. John, if that's the case, then why did you just spend a couple hundred words describing the current state of the Mets organization? And by the way, you're a journalist. Shouldn't you own a thesaurus? Who you crap it? Lincoln Who we want square and unemployed lawyer on the score. I crap for mathematical. I, I got to tell you, I'm still really excited for uh, for my kid in February. So you're not pulling me down. Today, Junior. Anyway, the National Review's Clayton E. Kramer opposes bans on high capacity magazines for two reasons. First, such bans impede self defense. Quote. Yes, you can change magazines rapidly with a modern pistol or rifle, but it is better not to have that distraction in the middle of a gunfight. Second, a smaller magazine wouldn't stop another massacre. Quote, would a ban on high-capacity magazines make any difference in these massacres of the unarmed? I'm hard-pressed to see how. To replace, to replace an empty magazine with a fully loaded one typically takes one to two seconds, even under stressful conditions. So a person acting in self-defense couldn't easily change his magazine, but the killer could. 21st graders were buried in Connecticut this week. How can we still not debate gun control on intellectually honest terms? Clayton E. Kramer, be a human. And who you crapping? That is what we're doing, and you can be a part of it as well. We have an open phone line if you want to jump in. Otherwise, when someone drops off, you can grab that open slot. 312-644-6767. Hey, buddy, who you crapping continues on the score. up for segment two of Who You Crapping on WSCR, the score of the Boars and Bernstein show. Lawrence Holmes in for Terry Boars here at Real Urban Barbecue in Vernon Hills. Tacoma, Washington, our next stop, and it's Robert on Who You Crapping on the score. Good afternoon, gentlemen. This crap goes out to the Damakong Zoo in an interview with Booyah, the magazine. He said the following, quote, I would assume most people want someone who is going to do anything and everything within the lines of fair play to win for their team, because I know I would. Hmm, let's see. Stomping a Green Bay Packers lineman and getting a two-game suspension, kicking Matt Schaub in the test, he's incurring a $30,000 fine, and multiple other infractions that are now within the lines of fair play. Tom Kong Zoo, who are you crapping? Thank you, Robert. This is from BJ Ranji. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to picture that. <laughs> He's wearing a Cardinals hat. Doing the, doing. doing the dance. Doing the discount double check. Show him what you the got, Pates, Ranji. The Patriots... Says this goes out to Catherine Bigelow, <laughs> director of the new film Zero Dark Thirty. In interviews promoting her movie, Catherine bragged about her journalistic approach to making a movie about the daring raid that killed Osama bin Laden. The film has earned near universal acclaim, but it does have detractors who criticize her erroneous depiction of torture being used to successfully extract the name of bin Laden's courier from a detainee. When confronted with this fabrication, she responded, it's a movie, not a documentary. Catherine, which is it? Are you taking a journalist approach as a filmmaker, or is it just a movie? You know what journalists who make things up are called? Fired. So Catherine Bigelow, next time you wish to make a movie about one of the most iconic events in American history, just stick to the facts. Who you crapping? Well done. Cranston, Ingleside, you're on the score. Hey guys, how you doing? This uh, crap is for Zach Zaitman, who on last last night on Lawrence Holmes show said that the Bears have a Pro Bowl running back in Matt Forte, a Pro Bowl receiver in Brandon Marshall, and they have Pro Bowl talent in Jay Cutler. The problem hasn't been those three this year, but the next the next sentence that he said was Jay Cutler and Matt Forte haven't played up to their abilities, and that's the problem. So that who you crapping? I'm going to need a ruling on that. <laughs> Lath? John and Glendale, you're next on the score. That's Glendale Heights, fellas. Okay. Ah. <laughs> this crap goes out to John Lynch, the wonderful NFL broadcaster for CBS. On Sunday at game with Seattle, he said, Russell Wilson has been five foot ten ever since he was born. So that must mean Russell Wilson came out of his mother's uterus being five foot ten. 
Now, how could that be, John Lynch? Who are you crapping? Doesn't John Lynch work for Fox? Yes. Okay. He does, but... It he, doesn't matter. He was on a roll. I didn't want to stop him. He was working his way toward greatness, as you heard. Edgewater, it's Craig on the score. Hey, fellas, this crap goes out to Herb Lawrence, who, while filling in for Lawrence with, an- Lawrence with another fellow whose name escapes me, said during a haircut discussion, I don't trust women to cut my hair. And then later on in the same discussion said, I trust women. They just have never cut my hair before. So which is it, Herb? Were you digging yourself out of a future dog house, or were you crapping? Thanks. Baby. Um, I, I believe I was there for the show. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he was sitting <laughs> yeah, in for I, me. I, I thought you were there for Ask Herb. That's it's a segment, segment on your show. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. Mike from Wilmette says this goes out to the perfectly quaffed Booyah college football analyst Jesse Palmer. Saturday during the pregame show for the New Mexico Bowl between New Mexico and Arizona, he was attempting to underscore how prolific each team's offense can be by saying first team to 45 points wins. Indeed, both teams have great high-scoring offenses. New Mexico was the first to score 45 points. They reached that mark in the third quarter. But luckily for the Wildcats, they weren't aware of Jesse's prediction because Rich Rod's crew did not walk off the field in defeat because they realized there were 15 more minutes left to play. And Arizona went on a frenzy, scoring three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, two in the last minute to win the game 49-48, despite being the second team to score 45 points. Jesse, perhaps these styling products have started affecting your brain. This is Division 1A football governed by a clock. Teams don't give up because a certain mark is reached by the other team, but when they run out of time. So, two things. Lay off the industrial strength hair gel, because seriously, that can't be good for you and who you crap in. Only one problem with that crap. They played Nevada in the New Mexico Bowl, not New Mexico. Oh, didn't... Wouldn't have known. I know so you. So thank you for have. that. <laughs> that was not on my schedule. <laughs> no, it shouldn't have been on anyone's. But they did have two players from Arizona started swinging on each other on the sidelines on the during same the game. Team? Yes, Sweet. two defensive because they gave them 21 points in the first quarter. Guys are swinging on each other. It was great. Milwaukee, it's Max. He's on the score. Hi, hi guys. This is my first crap. Good luck with your first crap. And I'm gonna start simple. I'm crapping Doug Gottlieb who last week during a CBS Sports Minute commented that with the Kevin Euclid deal complete, that he joined a list of players such as Johnny Damon, who were, quote, Red Yankees turned Red Sox. Now, I can't believe I have to explain this, but in the case of Euclid, he would turn into the thing that he currently is. For example, Dan Bernstein is a Duke student turned untouchable sports pundit, not the other way around. Guys, I know it's hard to fathom, but I think Gottlieb was actually more coherent back when he was a booyah. Doug Gottlieb, who are you crapping? This, is, this, this been, is going great. Yeah, this, is, this hasn't been a uh, <laughs> one that we're going to send to the broadcast museum. <laughs> I don't even want anything from us at the broadcast museum. Oh, by crackies going there. This is a, a whole exhibit? Yes. It's actually going to be Terry's next job. It's going to be like that thing North is doing in Vegas. It's just a greeter. Yeah, Terry sitting at a table saying by cracky. Q on the North side, you're on the score. Boys, this crap began forming last week after the Adrian Wojnarowski and Kevin Love interview broke on Yahoo News. Dan Bernstein let the inner fan out and said that you know that he likes playing with Derrick Rose after their time together at the Olympics. Ooh. Dan. Eric had a little boo-boo that kept him out of the Olympics this year. But that's okay, I understand. Like many of us, you're probably probably a little lightheaded with all the blood flowing away from your brain at the thought of Kevin Love playing with Derrick Rose or from watching the Samsung commercial. What you're probably meant to say is that you know they like playing together after working out together in L.A. before the FIBA championships, which occurred in Turkey, also filled with bloody white men. So Dan Bernstein, love you, Stuart. Who you crapping? Pete Hawk says this is for Sean the Flying Tomato White. He recently told a reporter he was going to have his signature red locks cut off for charity. He said, I haven't told anyone I'm doing this. I'm just going to show up and mind freak people. How cool you're not telling one. So it'll be a big surprise. And wait, you just told someone and a reporter. So, Mr. Tomato, Sean, your fans may be mind freaked when they see you, but it won't be because they're surprised. Who you crapping? He looks a lot better. I agree. 
Scott in Lansing is on the score. Hey, guys. Hey. This Blake, this, this Blake crap goes to Doug Gottlieb. Last Tuesday during a sports radio minute, Doug said the Texans got Letterman Dick, Letter Feet, based on their being the top dog game feet. But after the Patriots beat down on Monday Night Football, Doug said the letter on the deck changed from a one F. He just killed Mario! <laughs> you can't kill Mario! That's a new one. That was more of a cell issue than anything. Yeah. It's tough to listen to. So are we checking the manometer? What do you say? Yeah, let's let's check in. You know where Terry got it? Well, he gave it to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding on to it, but do you know where he picked it up from? Today, he had it clean. Manassas? How'd you know that? It's about time he had it clean, too, because it was starting to get mm. all goopy. Yep. Well, the pressure to close out who you're crapping will be borne by NIU Howe in Northbrook. Hello, boys. Hello. First time crapper. Good luck with your first crap. This crap goes out to Lance Briggs, who last night... On Jay Hood's show, <laughs> oh, yeah, I think, that he is I internet. Think, I, I think that that's enough of that. We're gonna we're gonna recheck the manometer, and Keith in Oak Forest <laughs> will close out who you're crapping on the score. Keith, Keith, it's all on you, man. You got to save it. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh no! Well. That's an appropriate ending. That's the end of who you're trapping today. <laughs> and the people were stunned. <laughs> and seen. <laughs> you make us wonder with the perfect. things you say. Maybe you that were having an off day. Yeah. The whole section. Hey, buddy. Yep. Who you crapping?